Hello, I am Mumu Dumbuch and welcome to the Viewpoint. Um, the imaginative domain we call the arts, what, what exactly are they? What kind of knowledge do we hope to get, you know, when we read a novel or see a piece of painting or hear music? Or is knowledge the wrong word, the wrong thing to look for in the arts? Is it pleasure? Um, and how do the arts reflect society as, 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 as well? Well, today to help me deal with these um, questions, these themes, and perhaps many more, is um, the current acting deputy vice chancellor of the university. For more than a decade, he was the dean of the Faculty of Arts and, 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 and Sciences, and he has written new, numerous books, including Nation and Nationalism in Gambian Literature, and Territory Myth Representation in Gambian liter Literature, a geocritical approach. Here is Dr. Pierre Gomez. Thank you very much for, for, for joining us today. Thank sir. you very much, uh, Mr. Moich, uh, for having me. A pleasure uh, being here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, for a long time you were the dean, or was it acting dean? Was it confirmed? <laughs> you will tell us later. <laughs> the dean of the, the, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Um, is, is that usual to, to have the two? Um, 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 domains, as it were, the arts and the sciences on the same faculty, for Ye instance. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the, uh, I served for 10 years as dean of School of Arts and Sciences, and uh, before that I served as head of uh, Division of Humanities and Social Sciences, and then later uh, in 2010 to 2020 now, you know, uh, dean of the School of Arts and Sciences. Yes, it is. Uh, it's more of an uh, Anglo-Saxon system, more of American. Uh, you know, most of a good number of their universities. That's what they have. Uh, you have uh, uh, s School of uh, Arts and Sciences, or in other universities they call it College of Arts and Sciences. It Google the uh, top-notch uh, American universities. That's what they have, and uh, there you within the the school you have uh, two main divisions. You have division of humanities and social sciences and division of uh, physical and natural sciences. In this particular case, you have the uh, the division of humanities and social sciences uh, composed of uh, the languages English, French, uh, Arabic, and also uh, psychology, history, geography, political science, development studies, uh, sociology, and so on and so forth. These are the, the social science, uh, uh, humanities and social science courses. Because though it is called arts and sciences, the fine arts component is not captured. That, that was painting. Yes, yes. Thing. So that one is not captured. We are more into the humanities and the the, uh, the the social sciences. Then you have now the uh, the physical natural sciences, maths, physics, chemistry, and biology. So for ten years I headed uh, that school, uh, you know, uh, trying to mold the uh, you know new citizenry in these uh, areas, and most of them now are in top. Uh, in uh, positions in this country. Absolutely, but, but for, the, for the purposes of our discussion here, we'll focus more on what I will call the imaginative arts. <laughs> so <laughs> you are <laughs> that, 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 that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, literature, yeah. because uh -huh. obviously you, 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 you are interested in that. Um, quite, I'm, I want to start from the beginning. Literature, what, what do we mean by it? What, what is it for? For instance, well, you know, literature, uh, its uh, its definition evolved. Uh, you know, so to the extent, you know, the uh, the beginning, uh, you know, you ask uh, many scholars, uh, you know, uh, what is this literature? They will give you anything that is written. So, uh, yes, novels will be part of literature, but then they will include anything uh, on agriculture, on uh, on sciences, and all those stuff because it was written. Um, but then uh, integrate, uh, if you integrate uh, other scholars like Terry Eggleton and others, you know, they will 
uh, talk about things, uh, uh, as, uh, areas uh, that are uh, dear towards entertaining, though educating, but entertaining the public. So, and th that is the reader. And uh, focusing mainly on uh, the following genre, that is uh, novel, that is the prose in general, uh, and then also uh, poetry and, uh, uh, you know, drama and so on and so forth. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Terry Eagleton. Um, um, he, he's, he's, um, his definition, he was in, the, in he's written this book, What is Literature? Exactly. <laughs> Didn't he? Uh -huh. So with him, he emphasized the imaginative element. Exactly. So, so therefore, what is then the relationship between um, if you like literature and history, for instance, because history one would like to think that they record factual things, yeah. <laughs> whereas the literary with the novels and, 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 and poems and stuff mm -hmm. like that, there's more of the imagination. So what's the relationship? Yes, now? the, you know, the, uh, history will now dig into the past and uh, try to explain the facts that happen, you know, the, uh, things that took place in the past and all those stuff to better prepare to some extent, the, uh, the, uh, the, f uh, the citizenry about today and tomorrow. Because that's, it's not just about talking about the past, per se. But then literature, literature uh, is a, it's an area that helps the, the author to have that license, that freedom, to either deal with factual uh, issues that can be brought in to, uh, to text, but also have that freedom to invent, to create a new world, to create a new order, uh, a new earth, like Dr. Tijan Sala would call in his uh, f a famous collection of, uh, you know, uh, uh, collection of stories to some extent. So there, that possibility to go outside the box, to think outside the box, to create, to create a new system, a new world you know, an, an imaginary system in place, an imaginary wall also. That one, uh, history will not do that. You know, it's only literature that can give you that possibility. Okay, so, but, but literature has that possibility to borrow from all the disciplines, even the core sciences. You see, the, uh, if you take uh, uh, reading the ceiling, by Dio Foster, you know, uh, Gambian uh, writer, is in uh, was in the UK and also Kenya, wrote "Reading the Ceiling." It's a gen, uh, it's a it's a gender text to some extent, mm. but then you can see the, she used mathematical uh, a mathematical formula to write that uh, to write that book. Okay, among other issues that you can uh, you can look at, it gives you that freedom. And later, we will talk about other issues, like yes. uh, uh, the father of Gambian literature, Dr. Lenry Wilfred Peter. Peters, Absolutely. a medical practitioner. And uh, you can see the influence of medicine in, in, in his work. His imagery. Yes, a lot imagery. of imagery, <laughs> medical, <laughs> medical imageries, and so on and so forth in, in, in his text because of that background. So the literature gives the author that that freedom, that license to interrogate uh, different systems in yeah. place. That's, that's very interesting, the interrogation, the interrogation bit, bit, because I was about to ask, how does that then reflect society? You see, when you do that with your piece of work, how am I to approach it? Y you've given me this imaginative uh, uh, um, creation, this, this newborn baby. Mm -hmm. so, so how are we to, to read that, how does it reflect who I am? Yeah, the, uh, you have uh, that French scholar, Francois Mauriac, who said that uh, literary work is never an ex nihilo product. It's uh, deeply rooted in human experience. So therefore, it is something that is, uh, from his own perspective, uh, that re reflects society. Is uh, what, ca what is captured there has, uh, has to do with uh, the realities. Though you, have, you can have also other scholars who might think that yes, they can also get that freedom 
to create a world different from what exists uh, now and then narrate uh, a particular story. Co not uh, exactly uh, what to reflect. But then one way or the other, there are you, you have traces of uh, those experiences that really transcend. And uh, we don't need to go further. I always want to take local examples. And uh, many authors, uh, take Baba Silla, for instance, uh, decided to, you know, he went to the UK, went to the British archives and so on, wanted to write his history book uh, on uh, of the Gambia because he noticed that the, uh, most of the history books that we have in this country were written by uh, uh, Westerners, uh, former colonial masses and whatever, and so on and so forth. And those who came up later to write, you know, apart from the one or two leading figures, you know, uh, you know there's uh, still some gaps. And he wanted to really interrogate uh, the system and the logic, went to the archives here in Banjul, to the UK, and got a lot of stuff and where to really write a, a f what he will consider a complete and true history of this country. Because in some areas, he has the belief that uh, that history has been falsified, that uh, it has not been, it is not complete. And when he finished the research, he, he changed his mind that the tool that he wanted to use, that is history, will not help really transmit the right message that he would want to do. Hence, he used that, those facts fr uh, based on uh, coming from the archives and uh, uh, use, use literature to put across the message. Hence, his trilogy, when the monkey talks, Dabaligi, and dreams of the island. This trilogy revisits the socio-political history of the Gambia from the colonial days to the early days of independence in this country. And in that book, you all the key uh, political figures uh, during that time are captured. And one of them that stood out throughout the, that this trilogy is Edward Francis Small, called in that book, uh, Pa Fare Du uh, Bundau. Uh, you see? So, and there, you know, the, the, the national dimension is really captured. And all the works that uh, this uh, man who fought selflessly for you and I to be in a free Gambia, you see, all captured through literature. And because that's the power that this medium can offer to be able to put across the message using different possibilities, history, uh, fiction, and other means uh, that were very, very helpful. Um, 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 absolutely. There, I want to discuss there two, two things. Um, if I allow for that individual creative imagination, then because what you said about um, cataloging to, to, to document, as it were, the, the, the different episodes, as it were, in, in, in our history, a kind of engage. How do I reconcile the creative individual imagination and anything like engage, being involved in, in, in societal cir circumstances, what is happening with, with, with society, almost like a programmatic, you have to be <laughs> a part of a program. So how do how does the individual connect to a larger purpose? Yeah, the, the, because here it depends. You know, you can have the, you, the writer has the option to go for the, uh, uh, for arts like the camera lie, you know? So, uh, and where you can now really ex uh, showcase your literary talents and all those stuff and so, and entertain your, the public. That's an option, and it is still literature. You can decide to do the uh, literature engagé, as you uh, mentioned, and uh, up for the, uh, the, 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 the Nana Gray Johnson, for instance, and the Baba Sillas, and so on and so forth. Nana did talk about uh, uh, 
you know, the uh, in Eye of Ebony, in uh, you know in the local, the national response to I, uh, to uh, Alex Haley's uh, roots, because in Eye of Ebony, the character resisted, because uh, as opposed to Alex Haley's uh, uh, roots, where Kunta Kinte and others were captured and taken to the United States. In uh, Nana Gray Johnson's Eye of Ebony, Simanga Jaji and other characters resisted, and even the women folk resisted and used every means possible, showing, giving also another version of the story that not everybody accepted uh, uh, slavery and all those stuff. You have other people who did resist, and also even the women folk used different means possible even to communicate, and there was this cultural resistance uh, in, in, in that text. You, you come back to Babasilla in, in the works, you see the way uh, he opted for this uh, committed literature, uh, and uh, where uh, the, the main character, Babasilla, will sacrifice his life, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, uh, Edward Francis Small, in the text, Farah uh, Edubundau will sacrifice his, uh, his, his life to go to the provinces, the Balangardis, and organize the farmers, uh, and uh, organize evening classes, uh, uh, organize uh, the, the, uh, the, the media, and so on and so forth. Or even to end up being the first Gambian to enter the House of uh, Representatives. Hence his slogan, no taxation with our representation about all the selflessly and in that in the in the war in the in the in the, in the in those books you can see the the historical facts there that is the that are taken from the archives because even in Banjul you go to uh, to the archive you have evidence of that how they were monitoring him you know so like you know <laughs> Like what we, we say, NIA monitoring you. Yeah, they, they were right. Oh, okay, Mr. Boyd, he, he entered uh, Q, Q City and went there and went to QTV. Later, he talked to this one and so on. They wrote everything against him and, and all is captured. But it's all part of showing the resistance, the determination against all odds. When all the system was uh, against him, this man resisted. And hence, in the, in the work, it was clearly captured that he died penniless, he died without a wife, he died without children. But the message that Baba and others, and Nana Gray Johnson later in Watchdog, uh, Edward Francis Small, the Watchdog of the Gambia, the message that they try to uh, put across is, after reading the work, for is for the emergence of a new citizenry, a citizenry conscious of the works done by our forefathers, those who stood, who sacrificed their life for all of us now to be born in a free country called the Gambia. Uh, uh, and that's the, the, that's the key uh, message, using literature, changing the mindset, and now uh, literature for development. That's the objective here. Uh, 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 absolutely, but how would you respond to, the, to, to this criticism? That that kind of literature, it's, it's more of a sociological studies, or they even call it the documentary novels. And, and, and the criticism is that um, um, you do that at the expense of true artistic excellence. No, it depends. Uh, you know, there's a battle between the two schools of thought. You see, and uh, remember, the, as I said, uh, Kamar Ali was uh, accused of, uh, of that. And uh, uh, Senghor uh, was uh, also not, uh, uh, was also accused of that, of the negritude, and vis-a-vis -vis Soyinka, and so on and so forth. So, you know, the, you have these different schools of thought, even uh, since in the 60s. So, but what is important here, and we have evidence, and we don't need to go that far, even interrogating Gambian literature, we have key elements that help to really understand uh, these, uh, this situation. I'll give you another example. Take, for instance, in 1968, Sadaud's first wife, uh, 
Lady Augusta Jawara. Many people do not know. We, now we talk about gender studies and gender, uh, gender activists and so on. Sadaude's first wife was the first gender activist in this, among the first gender activists in this country. She published in 1968 uh, uh, a, a, a play called Rebellion. Rebellion. Mm -hmm. You see? Rebellion, mm -hmm. uh, using a pen name Ramatulai Kinte. In that book, she calls for uh, uh, girls' education. And she calls for uh, respect for women and uh, w women as agents of change for development, for their rights to be respected, for them to be, their voices to be heard in, f in the family and in society. So that is uh, what she said in 1968. You see? So, and so, so using the, artist, the artist as a spokesperson. Exactly. People like Ngugi believe exactly. in this sort of thing. In 1968, well. could you imagine? A woman did that in this country. You see? So when we in 2021, when we are talking about girls' education, we talk about women representation, this lady did that in 1968 using literature. That's also one, one option. The other, uh, you have also other, other categories. Uh, if you take, for instance, uh, Anti Juka Jabang's uh, for the Phoenix so, or the Repeal. So uh, this collection of poems did really l revisit the social uh, vices of uh, Gambian society, y uh, especially from a gender perspective. You see, that there will be no sustainable development if at the end of the day, the women folk are sidelined. See, they need to be part and parcel of society. Violence against women is, will never help develop a country. We need everybody on board. And, uh, and everybody need to be really, uh, you know, respected and given their due and allowed the necessary space for them to express their talents for the greater good of everybody. So you have series of examples in, in this country using literature that can really put across the message. The literature is uh, an, uh, a tool that can be used also to put across a message of development. Yes, but, but how effectively d does it do that? I mean, when we take, for instance, um, post-independence Africa, well, we, we've been possibly before that we'll probably have to start with, for instance, things fall apart, <laughs> wasn't it? When it comes to modern African literature, which first really showed us that um, traditional society had sort of broken up <laughs> in many ways. That's, that's, that's what he was, he was trying to say. So when we look at how we've been representing ourselves over, over the years, how much influence do you think it's had on people, on our habits, on how beliefs and institutions interact. Yeah, to do that also, we need to revisit ourselves, revisit our culture, revisit our history, and also read. And that, for that to be documented. I always tell my students that when you go to the US, to, to London, to Paris, and all those stuff, you see, they don't expect you more, uh, more uh, they don't expect you to tell them more of Toni Morrison, to uh, Shakespeare, or Baudelaire, and all those stuff. They want to hear uh, something new, something raw, something original coming from the Gambia. So it is important for us to have, s uh, to offer something, to bring something, uh, to put something on the table, like Senghor would, would put it, that is, to bring our contribution to the banquet of civilization. What would be the Gambian contribution in that international uh, banquet? And to do that, it is a Gambian culture, Gambian history that we can uh, showcase. America is what it is thanks to their cultural industry. L look at Nigeria also their industry. Look at India, their cultural industry. What is Gambia's cultural industry that we can showcase, that we can uh, put forward and to better sell the image and, uh, of the Smiling Coast? Yes. That's also, and but also 
you cannot sell the uh, image of uh, the smiling coast if you don't know what smiling coast is all about what gambia is all about about yourself about your identity know yourself and know the world uh, so that you can better you know coordinate and also connect with the rest of the world. That, that, that is very interesting because when we go to Senghor's negritude, there was this assumption, <laughs> I think, of sort of an, um, an aesthetics of Africanity, mm -hmm. that, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. And wasn't he accused of um, um, essen essentialisms and, and that, that sort of thing? So here, are, we, are you talking about authenticity? Because when you say that, you know, to take something Gambian, is this connected exactly. to what is known as authenticity? I, I, I believe, and that's my, uh, uh, I belong to that school of thought. I believe that uh, l literature also must be useful. Yes, yes, the, the, uh, the arts component of it, uh, its beauty and whatever is important. But also it must speak to, to, uh, to people. It must help us revisit who we are. And I tell my students that you, you, you don't need me if you, are, if you are committed, if you are serious, to tell you. I can just refer you to the books and you know your, uh, your literature because it is there. And I gave you that trilogy of uh, 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 on, on Baba Silla, the When the Monkey Talks, Dabali Dreams of the Island, that is a whole ge a generation uh, talk, telling you about the social political history of the Gambia. I can also look at, uh, uh, look at the gender dimension in this country and list down uh, uh, ultimate conflict, uh, Baba Gale Jalo, uh, uh, the shock of Michael Hamadi Seka, and uh, the repeal and uh, phoenix of uh, Anti Juka Jabang. And, and also reading the ceiling of Dio Foster, and so on and so forth. The list goes on. And that, with that, you have a clear understanding of the gender dimension, the, the power and importance of women in society, and also and women in development. Then also, you can look at the social political aspect of it. Also, you can interrogate uh, Dr. Tijan Sala. And uh, we, in his famous uh, collection of poems, when Africa was a young woman. And there you will have the different world. And then that will, uh, you'll have now some similarities a little bit on uh, uh, things fall apart. El mundo ha cambiado, le monde se fond of Chinua Achebe. Where you have that wall, the old wall, the, uh, w but this time around, uh, uh, when Africa was a young woman, when Africa was a virgin, that is pre-colonial uh, era. Does where it, but but was, it, was it a virgin really? Because it actually, what do you get from things fall apart? Mm -hmm. We'll tell you that things were not all that wonderful. We we're just like any other human being. Yeah, but then there was a system. That's the, that's the difference. That's the difference and it is the response to uh, the, the Western uh, perspective that uh, and uh, uh, the author of Char uh, 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 Heart of Darkness, you see, and that's Conrad, the, Joseph Conrad, Conrad, Joseph Conrad, that is uh, showing that at the end of the day, before the arrival of the colonial masters, there was a system. There, they were, we had a political system. We have a social cultural systems and so on. Do different, but there uh, was one, and that's the what is uh, important. We so might have which was full of conflict and full of all sorts of things yeah, there was in, in human beings. Yeah, that was the wonderful thing about yeah, it. Yeah, but there was, there was, there was, there was a system where there was hierarchy, there was a way to do things, uh, you know, when you want to, okay, a political system th that existed. So it, was show, it shows the rest of the world how things were prior to their arrival. But then when they arrived, El Mundo ha cambiado. Le monde se fond, things fall apart. And then here, when, uh, when Bob, uh, uh, Dr. Tijan Sala also, in, in, uh, uh, when Africa was a young woman, also revisits that, that, that period when uh, Africa was a virgin, 
when Africa was a young woman with its beauty and richness and all those stuff. But then later on, in contact with the colonial system and all those stuff, people started changing, systems started changing, people started start, uh, speaking in tongues, in foreign languages and so on. Then now, we started losing our identity and then therefore the foundation is no longer there. Obviously, things will fall apart. But again, this, this so-called identity, when you go back in history, hasn't it in itself been evolving, been changing, responding to external realities? And we know historically notions such such thing as imperialism <laughs> has been around even in our in our in our neck of the woods when we talk about the Ghana Empire or, or, or Mali Empire. I keep telling people, what do you think that means? <laughs> you reckon they were nice? So this is just one more turning mm -hmm. in our history. Yeah. But again, that experience becomes part part of us. Maybe one is trying to run away from what they call organicity. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure whether in, in, in a life where there is random experience, I can turn around and <laughs> meet, have sort of an historical experience that I had never done before. So in other words, the self, the definition of the self is never really complete. It's always work in progress. Yes, work in progress. And yes, and that's why Dr. Tijan Malik Sala once again, in one of his poems said, who will bring the tablets yet again? That's the, 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 the poem entitled, Where are the banners now? Mm -hmm. Which banners is he talking about? The banners of Uhuru, the banners of independence, of freedom. You see, when we came out in the 60s, that we want our land, we want freedom, we want liberty, and so on. But then later on in one of the stanzas, you see, who will bring the tablets yet again? Remember, this, there is uh, an intertextuality here. Uh, Tijan, as a product of St. Augustine's, mastering the, bib the biblical references here and other stuff, plays now with words and now use intertextuality, which is a literary uh, you know, tool to now put across a message. With uh, tablets, tablets with capital T, you all know Moses, once brought these two, uh, when he freed his people in, 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 in Israel from uh, Egypt land and all those stuff. So now, here, now you can see the politician was now propelled to the position of a prophet. Remember in the 60s, they came and told their people that the white man must go. We need to get our land back. We need to freedom. We need Uhuru. But what happens? It means that that person, that prophet that came was a false prophet. Now the author calls for a second coming. A second coming of the new, uh, of a new, uh, to create a new order, a new world. Who will bring the tablets yet again? That's it. So this is really the rub, the problem with so-called authenticity. Because of the traces, and we just talk about it, Tijan Sala there, uh -huh. one, one writer once used the phrase to inventory the traces. Uh -huh. Then how do we tease out authenticity? What would authenticity mean in, in, in this world where you have a multiplicity, as, as it were, of traditions that you, 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 you've inherited? <laughs> if it doesn't go beyond the individual perception. It is, it is really about the artist, isn't it? But let's hold on that thought. We'll go for a short break. We'll be right back. Don't move. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your favorite QSAL service has gotten bigger. e Kanta. Now you can loan bigger credit amounts to make life easier for you, loan $75 C and $100 C and pay later. Yes, you heard me right. Get credit loan from $10 to $100 using Ifakanta by dialing star 393 hash. Anytime you run out of credit, whether you want to buy Q Power, browse the internet, make urgent calls, or send SMS, Ifakanta is the service for you. Dial star 393 hash and choose the loan amount of your choice with no hassle. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSell. Sunyabas, the pioneers of mobile loan service in the Gambia. We innovate, others follow. Terms and conditions apply. 
Hello, well, 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 welcome back. Um, I've got here in the studio um, Dr. Pierre Gomez, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University. And here we, we're talking about the arts, li literature, you know, works of the imagination, and how they connect, how they relate to society, our history, and ultimately what we want, our economic development and regeneration into, into something much better. Um, um, <laughs> Dr. Gomez, just before the break, we were talking about the tablets, yeah. <laughs> the, the new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. The but, but, but at least we, we we know. I think we are moving away. It seems from a more nativistic authenticity, isn't it? The, the notion of syncretism, even the allusions to, to, to Moses, the biblical, and mm -hmm. all of these things in our work, it doesn't it show that perhaps we, we are more syncretic now? There are so many different traditions, what Ali Masru, we call the triple heritage, mm -hmm. the, the indigenous mm -hmm. and the, the, the Islamic and yeah. the Western. Exactly. <laughs> So this is the base, it appears, now. Yes, but they're also trying to discover who we are, because that's part of us. But that's isn't that an ongoing evolution? Yeah. At any given point, you are certainly your past, mm -hmm. but it doesn't completely encapsulate your essence, because there is the little bit of a future that is somewhat unknown. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but then also... That is very important that we need to really know who we are. We need to, we need to know, we revisit ourselves, our past, and so that we discover ourselves. But then, when, once we do that, we need now to do what Dr. Landry with uh, Peter said, open the gates. Open the gates and discover new people. Open the gates and discover the world so that you can connect. He was the more world. cosmopolitan, wasn't exactly. it? His outlook was that's, that's what is important. And that's why I said earlier on making reference to Sengo, so that we can be part of that banquet of civilization. That banquet now you can uh, call it the, uh, whatever, you know, uh, it use any terminology that you want to use, but at least it's the opportunity now to connect with the world, that you don't exist in isolation. In, in Noah, perspective here from our own perspective uh, as, a, as Gambians so that we don't sit and think Gambian and, and uh, think that uh, we are a planet of, uh, of our own and then we don't have anything to do with the rest of the world. So what we are saying is let's negotiate, let's enter into dialogue with the rest of the world by now understanding what they have to offer and also borrow from them in terms of experience, in terms of uh, science also. So uh, also learn from, uh, from, from them. Because that's Peter's uh, pers uh, message there, that uh, when you open the gates, you need to learn. But you learn best practice so that you can bring that to your country and develop yourself. Don't be static. Uh, move with time. But then that movement must be a positive movement. That's it. See? But, but again, there's always been this struggle b between the local and the metropole. Where do I draw the line? Where does the local end and the metropole takes over? I'm, I'm from. I suppose artists would, would always struggle with this drawing yeah. of boundaries. Yeah, boundaries, uh, you know, from a little perspective, uh, can be looked at from different, uh, if you know, areas and so on and so forth. But here, that openness, that boundaries that uh, uh, that we would want to create, must be an imaginary boundary. It's a boundary that moves according to time and systems in place, up to a particular uh, a period you can see that the shift in that boundary. It cannot be static. And that's development. And that, that, that's what the message is trying to put across, that uh, with, 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 when, when you open the gates, you now discover, learn, go out, and see things that you used to do. Like, for instance, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Sadaudas, uh, the first wife's uh, book, uh, Lady Augusta Jawara, uh, Ramatulai Kinte, yeah. uh, the book entitled uh, Rebellion. Yeah. The, uh, 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 
Now, uh, uh, now she say went to the UK to study medicine. You see, but then the father at the beginning said that uh, the highest a, uh, a girl child can go is primary uh, primary six and uh, primary school, and that's all. That uh, in fact, who is going to accompany you, a, a, a girl, a woman, to go to the UK alone and things like that? But with a lot of negotiations, she went studied medicine and came back with that knowledge and skills. W later, the father was about to die, nobody to take care of uh, him, and the lady now uses that knowledge to cure the father. And you see the power of education. Now the father is being saved thanks to that daughter. Yes, but that daughter uh, got the skills through that exposure and uh, by now connecting with what was seen as uh, Western, that is that education, and then also having to go all out uh, to study medicine and all this stuff. So that, you that, can that, that see now. Absolutely. That, that uh, reminds me of Amerika Cabral. That's uh -huh. really what his politics was. Exactly. He was an agronomist. Exactly. Went back, went to the village, was teaching them how to um, 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 cultivate, till their land uh -huh. scientifically. Exactly. So, so, uh -huh. so, 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 so science comes into it. So, so now we narrow it down further. Um, we're usually told that when you read a novel, you get to know something about that society, mm -hmm. the society the author is from. Mm -hmm. When you look at some of our novels, what do you think that we are? <laughs> We're going through <laughs> certain reform, you know, in, in the sort of in the post Gambia, Gambia now we, we are with Adam Abaro. But reform must also go to the individual. Without that individual reform, if you like, you can bet your bottom dollar that the institutional bit will take time. Mm. <laughs> it's important also for, and that's a call for uh, artists to capture the moment. You see, the uh, during the impasse, I noticed some youths were writing, were writing to express themselves and all those stuff. So what I did at that time, later. Uh, uh, had a meeting with them, talked to them of uh, the Gambia, that at the end of the day, we need to document what is happening, but then using our own medium, using literature, to capture the moment uh, for posterity. So that uh, if our children, children, when they come over, the, they will be able to know what transpired. And uh, so what I did was I asked them to now uh, write uh, poems, but poems that will capture what happened, the different phases of the impasse, from the, from the, uh, the uh, elections, ask them to now rewind a little bit to uh, think about what happened. And uh, that is uh, during the elections time up to uh, the coming of uh, President Barrow. So it was, uh, and uh, later it, I uh, published it. It was a book that I edited uh, called The Long Road to Democracy in the Gambia. And that's what I would want at any given time for artists, for intellectuals to capture the moment. Just not to capture for the sake of capturing things, but to m make sure that they capture the facts. And uh, for that to serve as a testimony to, the fe to future generations, so that when they come and they go to the archives, they know exactly what transpired at, at a given uh, moment. Literature must be useful. Literature must, be s must serve as a reservoir that when we get lost, we come back to it to now reposition ourselves and uh, shape our destiny. And that's the, uh, that's the, the uh, it's important. Uh, 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 absolutely, I, I know many, many people who would, who would sort of cringe and be uncomfortable with the idea of literature being useful. <laughs> it's it's almost, almost like it is a social worker, <laughs> as, as it were, in, 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 instead of this sort of 
aesthetic edification, as, as they call it, that we that we we, we can, supposed to get. So, 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 so in in the end, you you seem to have been portraying to me sort of literature as a mirror, as it were, to reflect what is going. But some might say that what about literature as a window? to open vistas for me that I had not imagined. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm really fine with, with that. Uh, and I also, though I don't uh, belong to that school of thought, the Camaralize uh, group, I don't belong to that. Uh, you must have noticed that. Yes. And, uh, and also, I, 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 I appreciate also uh, those who use the literature to have access to other avenues, other visas, and all those stuff, as you rightly said. However, where we are, I feel that uh, there is need to use literature as that medium uh, to, re to revisit ourselves. But you see, uh, we can. Peop, uh, we, uh, you can use uh, an interdisciplinary approach uh, through literature to really put across the, the, the message so that people can really understand their history, their culture, and, and whatever. Because there will never be any sustainable development in this country if we do not know our history. And if we want to now put across a, a, a false uh, information. You do have some students who come to my class, imagine up to university, and they don't know anything about Edward Francis Moore. They don't know, they, for them, uh, what they know about the history of this country, a good number of them, is the post-independence era, as if nothing happened before that. When you have people do who do really in the education system, oh. perhaps if they had been taught that, if they had been introduced to people like that within the education system, maybe they would have known. So, what, what, what do you blame? That's for the that reason thing? why I call for I call for that uh, uh, that quest for knowledge, that uh, that reading culture to to change, and that was the reason why I came up with a documentary. And I, I, uh, there were two documentaries that I did uh, on that. One on reading culture in this country, on Gambian literature. It's on YouTube called Emergence of Gambian Literature. I made 100 copies, which I distributed uh, to uh, schools and uh, also put it on YouTube, uh, free access. And then also I did another one on Edward Francis Small, the voice of conscience. I made 500 copies, which I distributed to schools free of charge. Okay, and also have it uh, uh, YouTube also free uh, for free access. Why am I doing that? Because you see, I when I read all these things, I, it, it pains me a little bit to notice. You see, even uh, the hospital named after him, people don't know. Apart from Edward Francis Wall, you know, nobody knows why the, some will tell you he was a politi politician and so when the man never uh, 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 had a political party, you see. But when I look at the sacrifice that he did, when I went to, to Banjul to see his former house and whatever and so on, that when, even when he died, the house at Allen Street wasn't decent enough to have the the, the burial, you know, uh, funeral rites and so on and so forth. Then they have to move the ceremony to Clarkson Street, you know, so that at least they, they will have a, give him a fitting burial. He died penniless, without a child, with, with, without a wife. All that it's sacrifice. It's a true matter. Yes, and like remember in matter. those days in Batos, having now later to abandon Batos to go all the way to Balangam, and be helping people, the farmers there and so on. In this very country, the first, uh, you know, to, to enter parliament. He was the one fighting for our uh, liberation in those days. The, 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 uh, among the first to organize uh, uh, unionism in this country. S in your area, in, in the media, among the first in this country to champion uh, media, me media laws in this country, and questioning, even petitioning the colonial uh, master in those days. 
you know, among others, organizing evening classes against the will uh, of the colonial masters because he believed in the power of education. That once you, you get the information, you will never be the same again and you will not accept anybody to subject you to servitude. That's it. You so will ask for freedom. So, so it, 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 this is it. So the literary, the artistic, and all of that are connected to nationalism. Exactly. This has been the, 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 the theme, as it were, of, of the post-colonial state, as, as it were, the, 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 the nationalism. So we're coming towards the end. You've written on this, haven't you? Nation and nationalism in Gambian and, and, and literature, and, and your sec second book, The Myths and Representation. Tell us a bit about, about, about that and, and, and connect it to what we are going um, um, through now. I mean, of course, the post-colonial state, what everybody tells you from, from Achebe to the beautiful ones are not yet born, and all of that. The corruption and, 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 and the, the utter dishonesty in our politics, in the way we're dealing with ordinary people, we are still battling with that, aren't we? Yeah, that's why I refer, every, uh, I refer everybody to the book. Because everything is in the book, and uh, when and you look and you can see uh, the way I try to uh, <laughs> resist to at least distance myself a little bit from uh, literature that is uh, for art's sake, proposed to uh, s uh, that literature engage that committed one that for literature to be that useful and. Co uh, uh, calling everybody to rediscover uh, uh, their identity, their culture, and promote Gambian culture, Gambian literature, Gambian history, and all those. So it's thanks to those works that I read. And I got the, the info from those books. And I want everybody to get that info, and so that, at the end of the day, they can make a sound judgment. You see, in, th in those, uh, he, the those books that I that I wrote, I try to look at the idea of nation, the uh, nationalism, the sense of patriotism. How is it? It is portrayed in these works by Gambian authors. I identified a good number of them, and I and uh, I elaborated later with the one on Baba, but also you can see it from different. Uh, authors uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the books that I talk about, uh, like uh, 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 Nana Gray Johnson's uh, uh, The uh, uh, Eye of Ebony, and uh, among other authors that I uh, mentioned. Uh, but the b I also try to, in that book, also explain, because uh, uh, we, we are talking about national, in national literature, how national it is also try to explain the history of Gambian literature, how it all started, and uh, up to the 60s, 1960, when the first book emerged by William Conton uh, entitled uh, uh, The African, because many people tend to always to uh, mention uh, uh, an, uh, 1965, uh, 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 the second round published by Lenny Peters, Peters yeah. but then uh, that one, uh, that one, in fact, is uh, Peters' second book. His first book was in 1964. Uh, it's a collection of poems entitled "Poems," published by Mbari Publications in Nigeria. Yeah. It was it's later that satellites he, and satellites Kachikali. came after Kachikali, uh, Kachikali came and all those stuff. Then, yeah. Though for me, with all that, he is the father of Gambian nationalism. And in Peters, you can see traces of well-established uh, world uh, literary figures. You can see the Baudelaire. You can see some, uh, you know, Russian authors. Absolutely. But then Pasternak. And he and loved Pasternak exactly. and Proust. Marcel Proust. And These and were his exactly. experiences. And yes. the most uh, you know, f the, f the, f the, the, the author that really, for me, influ has influenced uh, Peters is T.S. Eliot. And there's a lot of Eliot in his, uh, in his works and so on. But then, 
among other the, issues the, the great that modernist we exactly. call it within the modernist tradition yes. of torture. among 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 other uh, uh, other yes. issues so yes. you can see we really try to look at also the social dimension that i mentioned that are uh, captured in uh, gambian uh, works that we try to explain and their usefulness and the way the message that are put across against certain vices for people to reap opposition. And I give you one example. That's Charles yeah, Thomas. Yes, 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 30 seconds. Yes, please. that is some, uh, <laughs> this, uh, the mem memorandum mm -hmm. where Tijan really was very committed, loved his country, ready to d uh, die uh, for his country, and but uh, shying away from corruption. Literature for development. Thank you very much there. Um, um, we've just heard from, from, from Dr. Gomez. It is the self-concept that really all change begins, and that's really what literature does. <laughs> Thank you very much for your very insightful views there, highly insightful. I truly enjoyed that one. Thank you very much, viewers. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Until the next time, I'm Amadou Goodbye.